Thank you for the warm welcome and thank you for this uh, great honour to bring a word on missions. My husband and I are here in Singapore because of that. The scripture passage for this morning is Zechariah chapter 8, verses 20 to 23. I think it's on the screen. If you could help uh, see it where you are to read it aloud together with me. Thus says the Lord of hosts, People shall yet come, even the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go at once to entreat the favour of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favour of the Lord. Then verse 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, In those days ten men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the rope of a Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus, I look to you even right now, in this moment. In my weakness, is your strength made perfect. Thank you, Lord. I submit myself to you. All things that must be spoken, let them come forth in power, by your Spirit, under your anointing, full of grace and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Zechariah 8, 20 to 23, a beautiful passage, is an amazing prophetic word. Wow. I titled my message, Missions Awakening. So here we see Zechariah the prophet declaring a new season of missions awakening. Zechariah was ahead of his time. With prophetic eyes, he envisioned urban missions. Today, 56% of the world live in cities, and by 2050, almost 70% of the world's population will be city dwellers. Wouldn't that make it a lot easier for Singaporeans to do missions? This global missionary movement announced by Zechariah anticipates the fulfillment of God's promise to bless all the peoples of the earth through the sons and daughters of Abraham. By faith through Jesus Christ, all born-again Christians are included among the children of Abraham, which means you and I have a part in all this, isn't it so? We have a part to fulfill Zechariah's prophecy, and I believe with all my heart, God is more than ready, more than ready to use the Singapore church to do that, to do just that, so that many peoples, all peoples, in cities all across Asia and beyond, we'll hear the good news. We'll see the difference of Christ-likeness in us. We'll be drawn to the Lord and therefore turn to the Lord. How will this prophetic promise be fulfilled? What would it take to see this kind of missionary movement from Singapore to the ends of the earth? I'd like to highlight at least two things. So to keep my sermon short, number one, prayer. Missions begins with prayer. And number two, presence. Missions requires presence. So number one, missions begins with prayer. Let us go at once to entreat the favour of the Lord and to seek the Lord Almighty. Let us go at once to entreat the favour of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. Now across history, all major missionary movements began with prayer. For example, we read in Acts 13, isn't that so? While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and prayer, praying and laying on of hands, they sent them off. It was this prayer meeting at the Antioch church that launched missions, the missions movement to the Gentile world. We are all beneficiaries of this pivotal prayer moment. You agree? Awesome God, yeah. Another example, you, have, you might have heard of it, the Moravian prayer movement in 18th century Europe. Imagine they prayed and sought God round the clock, 24 hours a day, yeah? For how long? Is it a week? Or is it a month? Or is it just a year? No, it went on for more than 100 years. Wow, what was their rallying cry? Totally missional. To win for the Lamb. The reward of his suffering. To win for the lamb the reward of his suffering. And they pledged themselves to follow the lamb 
wherever the Lamb would send them. Wherever. Anywhere. But giving priority to the worst places, the hardest places, the darkest places. The outcome was fabulous. History records it. The Moravians sent out more than 300 missionaries to the ends of the earth. Some historians even said this, that no community has ever been bolder or more devoted to Christ and to the lost, the souls of men, than the Moravians. They are outstanding. Prayer makes a difference. Missional prayer makes a world of difference. Amen. Here's another example, the Haystack Prayer Meeting. You might have heard of that too. College students, five college students gathered in an open field. Whatever for? Hey, for a group discussion. What about? <laughs> wow, when I read that, I was, of course, I knew about that a long time ago, but when I read an important detail, I was deeply moved. What about? What were they discussing? What was the conversation about? It's not about the next hottest digital device. No, it was all about lost souls. They were concerned for lost souls, especially those in Asia. Wow. Then a thunderstorm came. They ran for shelter. Where? Where? Well, under the overhanging edge of a haystack. That's why they call it the haystack prayer meeting. Huddled together, they prayed. There, they pledged themselves to become America's first foreign missionaries, first cross-cultural missionaries. They declared, we can do it if we want to. What a statement. Ultimately, it is Really, if we want to. God has already given the Great Commission. The Great Commission is a given. And He's counting on us to do the right thing. Choose to go. That eventually launched the American missionary a movement that had impacted the world in a very special way. That sent Adoniram Judson to Burma, Myanmar, and many more, many more, tens of thousands of other missionaries to the ends of the earth. Really, for world missions, we owe the Americans a salute. Of all the nations of the earth, they had been the most sending, the most going, and the most giving. There are other examples too, but suffice to quote A.T. Pearson. He was an American Presbyterian pastor, writer, missions pioneer. Some call him mission statesman well, because of his example. From his observations and personal involvement, he came to this conclusion. Every step in the progress of missions is directly traceable to prayer. Every step in the progress of missions is directly traceable to prayer. Missions begins with prayer. So the global movement of Zechariah 8 calls us to begin with prayer. We see a mighty prayer awakening. Let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. Entreat, seek, pay attention to these two words. Entreat in the Hebrew original has the meaning of travail as a woman in childbirth. Now, this tells me that there's nothing casual about it, isn't it? So, I know about travail. I know what travail is like in childbirth. I had three children, and all of them were natural childbirth. It's hard work. That's why they call it labor. Women, you understand? Yeah. I have to command my entire body to cooperate, to bring baby out safely, to deliver baby safely. The breathing, the contractions, the pushing, the muscle, all must be well coordinated. It's sweat, blood and tears. I must behave. I have to stay focused. I have to be wholehearted. From beginning to end, I must go for it and not halfway drop out. It might mean trouble for the baby, isn't it so? The same way with the word entry. The same with those words seek. It means to pursue, to go after, to strive for, to push towards, to work towards, being earnest, being intentional about the objective. In our context, missions. Missions begins with prayer. So there's nothing casual about prayer. There's nothing casual about world missions. There's absolutely nothing casual about intercessory prayer for world missions. Missions begins with prayer. Didn't Jesus say? He saw the crowds harassed and helpless. His heart was filled with compassion. He says, oh, pray that the Lord of harvest will send forth workers. Isn't that so? The first response is prayer. 
Let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord. The favor of the Lord. Pay attention to that word. And to seek the Lord of hosts. Singapore is called by God to be Antioch of Asia. This is no small thing. But there's really nothing to brag about. In fact, we should be shaking eh, in, our feet, eh, in our boots. It's a big role. It's a very big responsibility. To whom much is given, much more is required. Antioch of Asia needs heavenly favor. <laughs> heavenly favor. Being involved in missions mobilization here in Singapore, I realize how much we need a heavenly favor. What kind of favor would you ask from God? What kind of favor would I contend and, and cry out to God for? Missions begins with prayer. How shall I pray? How shall we pray? May I spill my heart this morning. Like the prophet Habakkuk, I would cry, Oh Lord, I have heard of your fame. Renew your power in our day. Lord, I'm not satisfied. In other words, Lord, I'm not satisfied just hearing about the great moves, your great moves in bygone eras of missions history. In the golden age of world missions, whether it was William Carey or Hudson Taylor or whatever, and I'm not also satisfied just knowing how you have been at work in Singapore. The John Sung Revival Harvest more than 80 years ago. The ACS Clock Tower Revival, huh, well, 50 years ago. This year's the 50th anniversary. The Billy Graham Rallies, you know, 44 years ago. The charismatic renewal of the 80s and 90s, you know, 40 plus years ago. And the missions movement of the 80s, a strong missions movement out of Singapore and the 90s as well. I'm not satisfied just remembering those things. I celebrate all those moments, but Lord, I desire much, much more. I desire to see you. Well, move upon the church once again. Come visit us again and again. The Singapore church needs divine favor, heavenly favor. We need you more than ever before. The church in Antioch of Asia needs you more than ever before. Why? Because from research from the Singapore Center of, of, of Global Missions, it has been reported that missions out of Singapore has plateaued. Uh, the missionary force is aging and many are retiring soon, but fewer are heading out for long-term cross-cultural missions. Has missions been happening? Yes, short-term, two weeks, three weeks, a month, some max six months. But the long-term cross-cultural missions in Singapore, from Singapore has been waning. No good. I cry out to God, Lord, you set us apart as Antioch of Asia, right? Wake us up to get our act together. We owe the world, we owe at least Asia, or even Southeast Asia, the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel. We need a new evangelistic fervor. We need a new vision of missions, a new burden for the lost, a new zeal to obey the Great Commission, a new momentum of Antioch missions, a missions awakening. Yes, in the 80s and 90s, we talked about a church for every people, every people group, and the gospel for every person. Nowadays, we don't hear too much of that, but Love Singapore is bringing that back. We are desperate for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord. As your sons and daughters go, clothe us in power because the times are getting difficult. Missions begins with prayer. How shall we pray? How shall I pray? What other favors would I ask God for? Understanding the big picture, I would dive deep into the specifics, the very important specifics. I would ask God to stir the Singapore church to engage the most neglected, least evangelized peoples of the world. They are all packed in an area of the world known as the 1040 window. I think there's a map for that. The 1040 window, the area roughly between 10 degrees north of the equator all the way to 40 degrees north of the equator, here we find 69 nations, home to 4 billion people, 40% of whom have never heard the gospel even once. Not even once. All the major religious uh, uh, sectors of the world are parked there. This 4 billion people, they represent 87% of the world's poorest of the poor. Wow. And guess what? They are not far from us. The majority, the majority of this 4 billion are within Asia, 
all within a seven-hour flight radius from Changi Airport. Antioch of Asia. Missions begins with prayer. May our hearts be tucked. May our interests be stirred, revived, to go investigate this whole place called 1040 Window. You can go to the website, Joshua Project, and you have, have, you have lots of information. I remember when, when uh, in the early 90s, when we learned about the 1040 window, my, house, my heart was very stirred. And up to today, I'm still praying for the unreached peoples of the 1040 window. The Lord specifically laid six people groups on my heart. And I remember, whoa, their names very well. The Archines, you know, the Pushtuns, the Hazaras, the Hues, the Kazakhs, the Uyghurs. The Pushtuns are the Taliban militia, I understand. The Hazaras are the ones harassed by the Taliban militia all in Afghanistan. And the Lord burdened me that, you know, yes, pray for them as often as I can, but especially during Holy Communion. During a Holy Communion. The Lord put that within me as my, as my assignment. Besides praying anytime, anywhere, during Holy Communion, as I partake of the elements, present before Him the names of the six seriously unreached people groups, all of which are Muslim all of which are in Asia. Missions begins with prayer. How else can I pray? How else can we pray? Is there another favor I would ask from God? Yes, I would ask God for tremendous favor to bring together the local church, the missions agency, and the marketplace people as a threefold court for world missions. All three strands, may all three strands have eyes to see that the Antioch call of Singapore is so big. Wow. So challenging and so important that we must get out of our silos and work together creatively, synergizing efforts strategically to accomplish more than we could ever achieve separately on our own, especially in the 1040 window. Missions begins with prayer. How else can we pray? Plenty more. Let us ask God for wide open doors, wide open doors, unprecedented opportunities, unexpected possibilities through diverse paths, such as education, school planting. Did our missionaries come here to plant schools? Yes such as healthcare, hospital planting, clinic planting, mobile clinics, and all so, so many uh, ways to do it, such as business planting, not just doing business in places that are thriving and wanting Singaporeans to be there, but going to places where no, no businessman wants to go and start enterprises. And through all that, allow God to open Fresh new doors. Many streams all flowing in one direction to prepare the way of the Lord for church planting movements in the 1040 window that would lead to community transformation from the ground up wherever He plants us. Whether as an educator or as a healthcare worker or as a business person. Missions can come in a diversity of ways. Amen? Missions begins with prayer. Let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord. Let us, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. The let us speaks of unity, moving as one, praying with one accord, with one heart, one mind. Yes, indeed, for church planting movements in the 1040 window, for example. Yes, we must speak the same language, have the same desire, and keep on asking, seeking, and knocking, agreeing in prayer for the same favors, plus much more as the Holy Spirit leads you. A grief for missions awakening at Ang Mo Kyo Methodist Church. A grief for missions awakening in the Methodist Church in Singapore. Pray without ceasing until we see something catalyzed, until we see some new things happening in the horizon of world missions in Asia, 1040 window. Let us go at once. Let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord. Let us talk about unity. Go at once speaks to me of urgency. Go with a sense of urgency. No delay, no debate, no detour. Not when I feel like it, or not when I feel up to it, but rather as we hear the call of mission, say, Lord, I avail myself as a volunteer to be trained. 
Instead, we choose to put God first, prioritize my father's business, our father's global business. Can? Amen. Why the urgency? Because the days are evil, because times are changing, because many nations are in a state of emergency, because there's such a thing called geopolitical tensions, deepening polarizations, wars and rumors of wars. Oh, yes, there's famines and earthquakes, refugees and so much more. And in the spiritual realm, there's false prophets deceiving many. Wickedness is on the increase a lot. The love of many growing cold church. We have to cry out to God, say, Lord, help the Singapore and your church in Singapore that our love will never grow cold. That as we love God, we will love the lost. The end time scenario is unfolding right before our eyes for such a time as this. The world needs good news. Amen. When, pan when the pandemic hit, the one thing that hit me was, oh, all the more, Singapore needs good news, the salvation of the Lord, the manif His manifest presence and power, all right? Even in miracles, signs and wonders. Why the urgency? Because God did say in the Gospels, the end of the age is the harvest. We are approaching the end of the age. The warfare will intensify. He didn't say it will be easy. The devil will fight us to distract us and discourage us. But still, the world needs a saviour. Still, the world needs a church that will stand firm to the end. A battle-ready church, willing to pay the price of inconvenience, discomfort, or whatever, you know, suffering and persecution. The world needs a missions-minded church, ever mindful of Matthew 24, 14. You will see all these things happen. Hey, but the end is not yet. Not until this. This gospel of the kingdom must be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all people groups and then the end will come. You want Jesus to come? Oh, please, get our act together, all of us. Preach the good news. Do missions. Prioritize missions. Matthew 24, 14 said that. Four billion people still without knowledge of Jesus Christ. Missions begins with prayer. Why the urgency to pray as one, like never before, with such a sense of urgency, praying as one. Why? Because in the natural, amidst all the chaos of world affairs, we are easily overwhelmed and we, are, we easily say, Aya, give up now. We can't cope. We are tempted to just walk away or stay home and do our Singapore thing of national pastime, eating, drinking, and making merry. But in prayer together, as in the days of Acts, as in the days of Acts, but in prayer together with one accord, we will experience God. He will pour out His Spirit to refresh us, to empower us, to embolden us. He will reveal His divine secrets and strategies because He's all-knowing, right? He's all-powerful, He's all-present, He's all-wise. He will guide us, and it's, as He does so, Lord, help us, sons and daughters of Abraham in Singapore, to do our part, follow your roadmap, go where you lead, and keep on sowing the gospel, keep on watering the ground, the hard ground, with our tears of intercession. And praise be to God, He will give the increase. Amen? He will give the increase. Our best ally and greatest partner is God Himself. Yes, first of all, missions begins with prayer. Help is just a prayer away. God didn't say, didn't God say, call to me? Didn't God say, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you marvelous and wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. I love it. I could never figure out on my own. I love that part. Secondly, missions requires presence. First, missions begins with prayer. Secondly, missions requires presence. Let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord to seek the Lord of hosts. I, myself, am going. There's been a lot of talk about digital missions, right? As the new way of doing missions, no doubt there's a place for that, especially in restricted access countries, and especially during a time of the global pandemic. But digital missions can never be the substitute. It can be a supplement, but not the substitute. Why so? Because biblically, it is about incarnational missions. Nothing beats God's original template, 
which is incarnational missions, in-person, on-site. Missions requires presence. The on-site, in-person presence of Christians, the Christian missionaries, especially in the 1040 window. Remember, this is where 87% of the poorest of the poor live, and they are within a seven-hour flight radius of Singapore. These precious souls have no means, no means to acquire you know, computers and the latest devices. They have little or zero access to the digital world. Jesus, our Savior, came in person, didn't he? He came on site, right, in human form. He dwelt among us. Can we not follow our Jesus? Incarnate ourselves among, among those who need to hear good news. Can we follow his footsteps? Don't be distracted by digital missions. It can supplement, but not substitute. The same way with online, church online or church on site. Online can never substitute on site. This morning, I'm deeply stirred, deeply stirred that Antioch of Asia is overdue, overdue for a missions awakening. For genuine, incarnational, in-person, on-site, cross-cultural missions. And I sense that God is desiring to prepare a younger generation of teens and 20-somethings. I believe that God wants to deploy them one day to live among the 1040 window unreached peoples who are still in the dark, clueless about Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Let me spill my heart. During a time of prayer, I had a vision, which I'm convinced is from the Lord, and it's still, you know, it was several years ago, but it is still as real and relevant and riveting in my heart as ever. I saw a teenage boy decked out in trendy designer clothes and trendy designer shoes. He was standing on lush green lawn. From, the, from his gestures, gestures, I could tell that he was uh, self-admiring, and he was preoccupied with himself. Then I saw an invisible hand reaching down to restyle this teenage guy. It was a radical makeover. This teenage boy is now in ordinary t-shirts, t-shirt and very ragged pants. He was barefooted and now he was standing on hard, dry ground. What a contrasting picture, isn't that so? I saw him balancing a wooden pole across his shoulder. On both ends of the pole, hung, uh, hang, uh, was the, there was a bucket of water. All right? Each bucket filled to the brim with water. The restyled teen began walking in one direction. And with his hand, he was just splashing water from the first bucket on the ground, on the hard, dry ground. And wherever he went to splash water, what happened? The hard, dry ground became a trail of beautiful greens, all right? A trail of tender greens, beautiful, biblically, biblical. Didn't God say through the prophet Isaiah that he would turn deserts into fertile fields? What about the second bucket? In that vision, I asked myself. Suddenly, I smelt. I picked up the scent of wine. Miraculously, the water in the second bucket had turned into wine. I was moved beyond words. I began to pray and I asked myself, what is the Spirit saying to the church? And I felt the Father gave me understanding and I submit this to you. The first picture of the teen in trendy designer clothes from head to toe represents a self-absorbed first world generation, <laughs> preoccupied with mammon and all the me, my, myself stuff. The second picture of the same teen, restyled by the invisible hand of my father, speaks of divine transformation, a new generation set free by God for a purpose, set free from mammon and the me, my, myself entitlements to pursue a different set of aims. What aim? Messiah and his mission, Messiah and his mercy, Messiah and miracles. This new breed will lay down their lives, lay down their rights, and volunteer themselves as Messiah's servants to bring living water into the difficult places, the very hard, dry places, the dead places, the dangerous places, the desolate places, places where harassed peoples languish in painful neglect, thirsting for change. This was what 
flooded my mind and I jotted down the notes. What I'm telling you now is exactly what was in my journal as the Lord spoke to me on the interpretation of that vision. The water turning into sparkling new wine speaks of God saving the best for the last. Remember the Cana wedding? Saving the best for the last. In this mission's awakening, the best is yet to be, church. God is reserving his best and his finest for the final lap of world evangelization. And young people, listen, God is looking for you. Prepare well. Draw near to God. Missions begins with prayer. Be prayerful. Be a praying generation exceeding my generation. They will be a missions generation. Zealous, jealous for God's name and fame. They will count it an honor to serve God, to serve Jesus, to serve God in the places where Jesus is least known or not known. They will be a miracle generation with absolutely no qualms about the supernatural. Why? Because they understand, they know how important, how necessary the power gives of healing, miracles, signs and wonders are for world missions. They will be a mercy generation, broken and burdened by God to serve the poor and needy in our world. No longer self-entitled, self-indulgent, self-preoccupied, but rather selfless, selfless, willing to serve the least among us, especially the unreached peoples of the 1040 window. Amen. Young people, you are the candidates for God's next great move. Missions awakening. Just like how the early Methodist missionaries came to Singapore. Hey, they started schools, right? They planted churches, transformers from the ground up. God is looking for ambassadors such as you to prepare yourself well and at the right time. Yes, with the help of your church, go. Remember Sophia Blackmore? She helped to plant, uh, set up schools for the education of young girls in Singapore. Yeah, and as well, as well as boarding homes for abandoned girls or abused women, runaways and orphans. Well, I ask myself as a, as a mother, will there be Sophia Blackmores from Singapore to go serve? the disadvantaged and marginalized girls in the 1040 window. There are plenty of them with no opportunity for life or education. Why not? God is counting on us to bug him, bug him. Prayer, mission, missions begins with prayer. To bug him with the missions awakening in Singapore to bless and release our sons and daughters for a new wave of, everybody say, Methodist missions. Yes, exceeding the previous era. Agree? Let us go at once. Wow. So our young people, as, as we cheer them on, as we pray for them, hey, I tell you, they can't help. They can't help but catch the vision. They can't help but own the vision. They can't help but run with the vision. They would then say to their peers, hey, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and seek the Lord Almighty. I myself am going. Yes, missions requires presence. Presence requires going. Presence requires relocation. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples among peoples. Missions is incarnational, on site, being in person, living as salt and light among them. What happens? Wow, through our ministering presence, through our Christ-likeness, through our, well, gospel sharing and our good, good, good news and good works, lost souls will taste and see that the Lord is good. They will begin to want what we have. They will begin to hunger and thirst for the reality of God they see in our lives. They will talk about us in their community, yeah? And they will exchange notes, well, and, and, and talk about what they hear and see about us. Imagine a people group movement. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, ten men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the rope of a Jew, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. It starts with, let us go at once to entreat the Lord. Now, the, the verse 23 says, the, uh, the Lord says, let us go with you. We have heard that God is with you. Imagine the unreached peoples come running to us, the Uyghur, the Khazar, the Pushtun, the Hazara. The Kashkai, the Kurds, tell us, how can we become, become one of you? We want to follow you. We want to follow your God. Imagine the momentum gathers from one person, from person to person, from family to family, from clan to clan, from tribe to tribe, unstoppable. Wow. Exponential is no longer one belief, believer bringing one lost soul. It is now one believer attracting ten. Is that called a people group movement? 
Absolutely. Ten men from the nations of our tongue will take hold of the rope of one. Let us go with you. Exponential, missions explosion. Missions awakening. It starts with, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and seek the Lord Almighty. Let us get serious with God. Let us get our act together. Let us get, let us get on God's agenda. Let us get praying for world evangelization. Let's get going. Ooh, and a glorious outcome. Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. God gives the increase. Are you ready? Missions begins with prayer. Missions requires presence. May God use Ang Mo Kyo Methodist Church in a very special, unique way. May you lead the way. And as you do so, I believe God will exceed our expectations. He will do the immeasurably more beyond our asking, beyond our imagination. Amen? Shall we all stand for a moment? I just want you to just, uh, if you're comfortable with that, just lift your hands to the Lord. You know, it's like an act of worship, yeah? An act of surrender. Whether you're a grandmother, grandfather, or mother, father, auntie, uncle, whatever, all right, I want you to now begin to bless your sons and daughters, grandsons and granddaughters, nieces and nephews, and say, Lord, the young ones in my sphere of influence right now, I bless them. I speak life over them. I ask that you begin to stir in them. Oh, hallelujah. That mission's awakening. Hallelujah. That prayer awakening. That mission's awakening. Hallelujah. That revival of first love for you. And the result of that is that they, can, they can't help but begin to be concerned about the lostness of the lost, especially the least evangelized peoples of our world. Yeah. In this quiet moment, I want you to talk to God. Present the young ones, by name to the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Name them one by one. Ask God to speak, like Samuel. Speak, Lord, your servant hear us. Ask God to use you to encourage them, pray with them, pray for them. In your two, right now, I want you to just turn to somebody, husband and wife together can hold hands, or otherwise twos and threes. I want you to ask the Lord for a missions awakening in the Methodist Church in Singapore. Hey, beginning with Ang Mo Kyo Methodist Church, why not? Yeah, uh, God needs a catalyst. Yeah, in your twos and threes, yes, just uh, husband and wife you can hold hands. Otherwise, in twos and threes, just ask God for a missions awakening in the Methodist Church in Singapore. And ask God to use Ang Mo Kyo Methodist Church. Amen. Ask. Ask big. Lord Jesus, bless Ang Mo Kyo Methodist Church in a very special way. Lord Jesus, thank you for the heart for missions. Lord, intensify that deep within. 
Oh, Lord God, Lord, cause everyone from a PIC all the way down to the most ordinary new believer, oh God, that each one will be possessed with the zeal of the Lord for the cause of Christ worldwide. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus, bring about a Methodist revival that is truly, truly centered in Christ and missions-driven. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The worship team will take over. <laughs> 